So the building is gone. Perhaps we should take a look inside. It appears it is not scooped out after all. Members of the media were reporting that the building had collapsed due to structural damage and fire more than 20 minutes prior to it going down. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened. Uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? The building can clearly be seen in the background as Jane Stanley reports its demise. Jane, I think many of us, when we heard the news, perhaps on the radio earlier today, were... Uh, the feed would be cut before the building collapsed. And, and just couldn't un comprehend it. I mean, it, was, it almost sounded too far-fetched. Um, I was wondering what it felt like for you being in Manhattan. Well, unfortunately, I think we've lost the line with uh, Jane Stanley. Um, they called me down. I think it was part of the 9-11 Commission. They asked me the same questions that you guys are asking. Me. And um, at that point, they said, okay, thank you. And they really? sent me on my way. And yeah, you told them pretty much everything you just told us. Yes. You were in the building, got rocked by an explosion, yes. all that. Yes. And you know that they didn't mention Building 7 once in the commission report. I told them that's where I was. It was very, uh, to, to tell you, it was very scary because they, they, they looked like very important people. Yeah. They were questioning me about certain things. And, um, I don't know if they liked the answers I gave. I can pretty, I, I can care less. I gave what I, my account of it, the truth, and that was it. That day I'll never forget, and the explanations that were given to me is totally unacceptable, totally unacceptable. I'm just confused about one thing, and one thing only, why World Trade Center 7 went down in the first place. I'm very confused about that. I know what I heard. I heard explosions. The, the, the um, expl explanation I got was, it was the uh, fuel oil tank. I'm an old boiler guy. If it was a fuel oil tank, it would have been one side of the building. After 9-11, a climate of fear was created in order to shut down any opposition to the Bush administration's new agenda. A week after 9-11, anthrax began appearing in the mail. The letters were made to look as though they were the work of Muslim extremists, claiming death to America and Allah is great. Now, if you remember these anthrax letters, they were written to appear to be from semi-literate Muslims, very crude handwriting, Allah this, Allah that. Uh, they really do look more like movie prop letters than real letters. The targets were government buildings, media outlets such as CBS, NBC, the New York Post, and politicians such as Senator Daschle and Leahy, two members of the opposition party. When the FBI tested the anthrax, it was highly refined and weaponized. Colin Powell would go on CNN and deny these allegations. No, I think uh, we've had a lot of stories over the past four or five days. First it was weaponized anthrax, then it was highly refined, and then when it was analyzed it was discovered it was none of the above. The anthrax used in the attacks was identical to that of the AIM strain, which led the investigation to Fort Detrick. An analysis of the anthrax that was sent to Senator Daschle's office shows that this anthrax has a sophistication 
that leads people to know that it can only be produced by a PhD microbiologist and it would have to have been done in a small, well-equipped uh, microbiology uh, lab. This appears to be the so-called AIM strain. That was a strain of anthrax that was first isolated almost 50 years ago at a uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture diagnostic lab in Ames, Iowa. What's uncommon about this is that it has been engineered in such a way to be, uh, as they say, readily aerosolized. That means, in effect, that what somebody has done is taken the anthrax spores, added to them some kind of a chemical to get in the way of a normal electrostatic process that causes the spores to clump together. Chemicals been added to declump them, in effect. That makes them very fine. They are able then to be dispersed very readily into the air. The Washington Post would report, genetic fingerprinting studies indicate that the anthrax spores mailed to Capitol Hill are identical to stocks of the deadly bacteria maintained by the U.S. Army since 1980. Those labs can trace back their samples to a single military source, the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases at Fort Detrick, Maryland. It's been made quite clear that Al-Qaeda wasn't behind this. It is a specialized biological weapon only produced by our military in one facility. High-level FBI and CIA officials said none of the 60 to 80 daily threat reports from intelligence sources contain evidence linking the anthrax attacks to Osama bin Laden's terrorist network. This did not stop the mainstream press from trying to blame Al-Qaeda. As investigators race to find answers to the recent wave of anthrax terror, we'll look at what investigators are targeting now. <laughs> Since September 11th, Americans have been put on alert. This is so terrible. Investigators are trying to ward off more attacks by dissecting the terrorist plan for September 11th, looking for patterns, methods, associates that could reveal what else terrorists had in mind. It was not something smuggled in from Iraq. It was not something smuggled in from any Middle Eastern country. It was U.S. government ultra-fine granulated weaponized anthrax spores. It was another story that the media absolutely would not touch, the story of Dr. Philip Zak. And it goes back to the U.S. government lab where the anthrax was stored. It was reported that official U.S. government documents in the anthrax investigation showed that Dr. Zak had entered the laboratory where the anthrax used in the letters was kept without proper authorization after having lost his job. Somehow the Bush administration would have the foresight to be on Cipro six weeks prior to the attacks. How convenient. An attack traced back to U.S. government facilities and the president and his staff happen to be taking the antidote before it's even in the mail. Judicial Watch would file suit against the administration for its actions. Well, this is another good example of how certain people consider themselves to be above the rest of us. On September 11th, I think it'll come as a shock to a lot of people, but it's been reported by the New York Times and other major news organizations and confirmed by the White House. The President's office and Vice President's office went on Cipro, the antibiotic that was used to combat uh, anthrax. The White House went on Cipro, it must have known that either an attack was underway or was imminent. It shows you that some people in this country are less than equal and are not treated like the political elites. Nine Eleven was an international intelligence operation that included role players within our own government as well as in the governments of Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and Israel. Each played a compartmentalized role in order to create a climate of fear and confusion. This combined with the evacuation of government offices kept any type of dissent off the radar. It was a time when Americans felt they needed to rally around their leaders, and they did. I can hear 